Sanford Smith here with Penn State Extension. This video covers important information about harvesting timber that anyone might be interested in learning, especially those who own forest land property. Harvesting timber is something that people only do once in a while, and so it's important to do it right. Sometimes people get distracted by the value of timber and the price they're going to be paid, and they forget a key thing, and that is harvesting timber in such a way that you encourage a new forest to grow back in. So today we're going to look at three different things. We're going to look at competing vegetation, deer impacts or deer uh, effect on young forests coming in, and also light. My colleague Dave Jackson is going to talk next about competing vegetation. Dave Jackson here with Penn State Extension. Let's first start by defining regeneration. And regeneration is simply the process of growing a new forest from seedlings and sprouts. And as my colleague mentioned, there are many factors that interfere with regeneration. We're going to talk about competing and invasive plants. So these plants predominantly interfere with the growth of a new forest with that regeneration by casting dense shade on the forest floor and competing for resources such as water, nutrients, and light. So why do we have so many of these plants today? Why are they such a problem? Uh, today when they weren't in the past is that these plants are very shade tolerant typically that means they can grow well in shady understories so over 100 years as our forest developed they can become very common and number two is that they're not preferred to be browsed by white-tailed deer so these species are very low on their preference and they're allowed to proliferate some of the very common plants that we see are what we have around me here today. So this is Japanese barberry, one of our invasive plants. This is hay-scented fern. And what I have behind me here is striped maple. So these are some of our most common plants. They all have become very numerous and can become very extensive and just cover forest understories. So it's very important that you control these plants prior to having a timber harvest. Most commonly, we're going to use herbicide applications to do our work. Oftentimes, people think we can control them through cutting, but most times after cutting, they just simply re-sprout. So herbicides are going to be your most effective approach. So up next, we have my colleague, Sanford Smith, and he's going to talk about deer and deer impacts. Now we're going to talk about deer and their impacts on forested areas that might be harvested for timber. There are many ways deer can impact forests. One is they reduce the number of young trees in the area. Another is they decrease the species composition of an area. That means the number of different types of species there. And they also uh, decrease the height of sprouts and seedlings. Now here we have some stump sprouts. You, these are red maples. You can see how they've all been nipped right off there. And these are never going to grow into tall, healthy trees. Evidence of too many deer in an area or high deer impact would be where you have browse lines where everything is munched off below about five feet or you have uh, lots of undesirable species that deer don't prefer to eat. Well, what are you going to do about the problem of high deer impact in a forested area? One is you can increase the hunting in that area. The hunting of does will help to reduce the uh, impact of deer in an area. Another thing you can do is put up woven wire fences around the harvest area, which can be expensive for the average landowner, but for larger uh, landowners or uh, state lands and such, woven wire fences are used extensively to keep deer out of those areas. Now Dave's going to talk about managing light to the forest floor. All right, the last thing we're going to talk about is the amount of light reaching the forest floor. It's important to note that different species of trees have different tolerances for shade. We call that their shade tolerance. That means some species can grow very well in shade and other species demand more sunlight, these sun-loving species. Some examples are uh, sugar maple, for example, does very well in shady understory conditions. But if we're trying to grow oak and we're trying to grow species like black cherry, then those species are much more sun loving and sun demanding and we need to let large amounts of light into that understory in order to regenerate those species. So foresters have developed harvesting methods that address those species preferences for light. And these systems can be utilized when harvesting to let in the proper amount of light depending on the species that you're trying to manage for, whether it's sugar maple or whether it's black cherry, for example. 
So ultimately on this site, a forester was involved in prescribed treatments to control the competing vegetation prior to the harvest. A deer exclusion fence was put around the perimeter to reduce the impact that the white-tailed deer were having. And large amount of light was let in here through this type of harvesting method to grow these sun-loving species like you see around me, like this northern red oak and this yellow poplar that I have behind me. So that was the prescription based on the objective for the ownership here to grow these sun-loving species. So for more information on this competition deer and light theme, be sure to go to the Penn State Extension website and check out our fact sheet on regenerating hardwood forests.